What if there was a simple jungle framework that also scaled with your rank? You can use it to control the game from low elo to high elo. Why worry about a thousand jungle decisions every game when you can just focus on two at a time? This first example will highlight the overarching problem for every single rank while showing you how this will also affect those in high elo with two high elo examples to follow. Whatever rank you might think this will be, trust me, it represents all of you. The Zax team have invaded. We now see that they leave the situation because the bottom lane had a cheeky look. The fiddlestick says, hey, let me start my rap as well as my red. Now his clear isn't perfect, he's gonna basically vertical jungle here, fall back to his blue side, and then go down to his red side. The Zac at this particular stage is a big question mark. Well, we know he started on the blue side and went up. You know, the enemy bot lane took a weird path, but as such, we thought, hey, maybe he was still leashed. The Fiddlestick sees the red is gone, goes back to the Raptors, goes to the river, and runs into the Zac. We paused, we had a discussion, and this is where the idea for the video was born. Because basically, after I explained what the Zac was doing, he says, okay, so basically, we're looking at what the enemy jungler should be doing versus what he actually ends up doing. And I said, exactly. From his perspective, the Zac started from the bottom side and was sequencing up, so we expected him to be on the top side scuttle. Because we stole his red side and went all the way down, he should have long since taken the top scuttle, shown himself on the map through top of mid, or done something that gives us an idea of what his actual game plan was. In reality, our fiddlesticks missed a lot of information that compromised his ability to make either decision. Now, before I can simplify this down into only two jungle decisions and what the Zac actually did, which will surprise you, I first have to announce that we are once more having a boot camp. Myself and Vokaido GG will be joining forces with Gosu Academy once more as well as Coach Kaibut to ensure that you have all the fundamentals you need that will outlast any meta and maybe even time itself. You'll see the topics on your screen now, a completely revamped curriculum specially to build on the previous bootcamps and along with tickets for this bootcamp we will give you all of the previous VODs to the previous bootcamp so that you can have all the fundamentals you need as a total package. And if you can't make the lessons don't worry about it, it's a two-week bootcamp. If you have work, school, there will be VODs available online for you as well. Teaching materials, exercises, classes, lectures, coaching, as well as a free course giveaway from my own personal site, Vukai.gg. You'll be entered into a raffle and I will be giving away 10 of those courses. Click the link below to join the Ghost Academy Bootcamp on June 26th with myself and Coach Kybit, and I look forward to seeing all of you there. Once he shows up, we have total confirmation of absolutely everything that he did. He took our red, he did his blue side, and we know that because he has 16 CS, that's four camps. We steal the crab, we chunk him, and now we basically know exactly what we want to do, which is of course, look bottom lane, nothing, okay, I'm gonna do the Krugs and reset. But we can apply the two decision jungle rule to the Zac. He's been chunked, he will have to go back to base, he can't stick around and wait for us, so he's gonna either go back to base and go to the top side and take that opposite side scuttle, or he's gonna basically say, you know what, if I was tracking the fiddle six of CS and I see the fact that he has a red buff, I know that my red side is not available. If he doesn't track that kind of stuff, he most likely goes to the top side and then realizes all the camps are gone, and based upon what we do next, we'll make another decision. The fascinating thing about this is that Zach actually went from the red to the blue to his red, not expecting any sort of vertical jungling, expecting the fiddle to arrive there after starting in the blue side. This is terrible and why I hate these stupid three buff studs. You lose sequencing tempo, you lose experience tempo, you waste your time, it takes you off the map. There's just nothing good about what the Zach did. From the fiddlesticks perspective, all we think is the guy was just really slow, which again, is not really that surprising. The problem is our fiddlesticks wasn't using the two decision jungle rule because he wasn't thinking about what the Zach could do and what the Zach should do. So he goes for a lane gank on a pushing wave and even though he almost does get some kills here, the intent as he explained was to maybe counter gank the Zach. But the Zach at 16 TS, no camps on the bottom side, no HP, he has to go back to base. And while we were doing that ganks in the mid lane. Now, as you from the Fiddlesticks perspective see this, there are two options for him once more. Once he ganks in the mid lane and paths to the top side where the Raptors and Krugs will respawn, what do you think could be another decision for the Zach to actually go and do? And it's quite a simple one. Yes, he can go to the Scuttle Crab and say, hey, the Fiddlesticks will be sequencing top to bottom. I've seen a bottom. I'm currently ahead of him. Why don't I take the Scuttle Crab, ward the Grump to track his second sequence, and then gank top lane with maybe the mid laner who is prior or even just by myself. Doesn't really matter what particular thing happens in your game, that's one decision, the right decision, where the Zac can then use the outside in rule to do that, gank the top lane, take his Krugs and Raptors, and now he's reset that awful beginning and regained control of his jungle. On the other hand, the Fiddlesticks would now be forced to path to the bottom side, and the Zac would know exactly where he's going to be, which is very important. Instead, though, we force a fight as the Fiddlesticks, everyone rotates, it's a bit of a fiesta, but the Yorick gets fed, all hail Yorick. Now, Zack, on the other hand, will basically take his blobby life and leave with no passive without taking the scuttle. So the Fiddlesticks, again, what's the two-decision jungle rule here? The Zack could, in theory, just go down to the Wolves and the Grump, 
and essentially look to gank bottom lane, assuming the Fiddle might come back to the top side, take the Scuttle and Sequence down, once more giving the Zac a bit of an advantage, or he could simply reset and then do his camps and do nothing else. Now, there could be other decisions you could put here, but it's important that you extrapolate what you think he should do based upon how you understand jungle and what he might do based upon how he's playing and what MMR you're playing in. With these two things, you kind of have the top tier decision and the lower tier decision, and you can respond accurately. So for example, our Fiddle 6 here goes, wrapped his red Krugs, why is this important? Because it will give us that level 6, which allows us to counter gank that Zac. We can also use FRGs to scan, resync up and wait for our bottom lane, and then go all in with that crucial ultimate that we should have predetermined we want to use on the bottom lane. Instead though, as you can see, he wasn't using this rule because he skips the Krugs, doesn't get level 6, and just runs at the Zac's blue. Now in the most silver image of all time, the Zac's doing his grump while the Fiddle does his blue, and then runs away. And because we saw the Zac having 25 CS the last time we saw him, that 16 plus Raptors plus Krugs plus a minion, we know now when we see him again that he has done Wolves and Grump as well. But there was no reason to check the Dragon, there was no reason to use the Effigy on the Dragon, there was no possibility that the Zac was going to solo the Dragon level 4 with his bottom lane pushed in, and you having no vision anyway means you could never contest it. And thus there was no point even going there because with that two decision jungle rule we didn't put that as one of the possible decisions if this was say a full hp shivana or a vi and they left the situation on the top side at level five and you knew they would possibly go for this nice cheeky dragon and cut the map to do so cool but what are you going to do about it now anyway nothing so we might as well do our quadrant let them go back to the blue side afterwards reset and go and maybe use our ultimate on the top of the mid lane such that we can take that herald you can also obviously react to a gank in the bottom lane or use your ult on the bottom lane that's cool as well let's jump into a master's tier game to show you where you can also use this as well now in this one we have a master tier nocturne versus master tier rel around 500 lp and you know how in low elo coachings and low elo videos hey guys you should always focus on your clears get the practice and make sure you're getting it right yeah because look it still happens but when it happens in master tier with this reset on the raptors that was unfortunately seen by the malphite which again should have been seen by the Nocturne because we see the Malphite move up in Ward, is you get unholy punished for it. Now the Rel in theory should do a 3 cam gank as we saw in the gameplay channel with that video the other day. However, she can also decide to flex into a full clear. So if you know she started topside, you know she's going down. The Raptor start is also possible for the Rel and probably should be what she uses. However, she sees the dive potential and decides, look, Nocturne's coming down most likely, I better do this dive and protect against a sort of gag, which is why she's here. The Nocturne has his reset, isn't thinking about these things, and is only focused on his full clear. Which you think was a better play here, and again, the two decision jungle rule is about how you think about the enemy jungler, and then make a better decision based upon that information that they give you. I expect Rel to 3 camp gank, but she didn't, so I guess she's gonna full clear, but she could go for this dive because it's pushing in quite heavily and Jinx is low. I guess I'll just farm. That's not how you respond to that. And now you should ask, okay, what's the Rel gonna do next? She could most likely, based upon the CS that I've seen, go do the Scuttle Crab, get 20, Blue will be 24, Grump will be 28. I have Gwen pushing in on the top side, shitting on my Vladimir. Maybe I should just go back to base after the Krugs here, sacrifice my bottom lane, do that top side Scuttle to deny it from the Rel, and if she decides to re gank bottom lane, as a lot of junglers of this type will, then I get to counter jungle her second spawn Raptors and Krugs. Alternatively, she could just take the bottom side Scuttle, cross mid lane, and take the top side Scuttle which is what the Nocturne seemingly thinks is going to happen, which is just stupid because it's a low elo move. However, by doing this, we do get the crab, we get to ward her raptors, and we get a coincidentally beautiful gank on the mid lane. A nice pre-6 gank against the Muffite. See, the fundamentals we talk about in low elo, mid MMR, especially in the courses I released, talk about these building fundamentals over time as you climb through the ranks. They will always carry over. It's an accumulation of skills. You don't lose any of them, you just use all of them. So while his focus on the crab and the tracking of the rail was incorrect, he still used good knowledge to basically make a good play. Now we can reset and of course come out of base again and go to the top side. From Morel's perspective, she sees this, she knows this, she understands this. So instead of going back to base, she says, hey, I better gank that Zed before level 6 as well. Hello, I can E to empower my Q, which stuns you, and then I can knock you up. And of course, you get the percentage max HP damage before I go on my very way and take the second spawn Raptors and the second spawn Krugs. And ideally here, I will go back to base. But what's Nocturne going to do? Most likely go out of base and do the Gromp Wolves and go down. But there is a possibility he could look to do something about top side here. Let me just go for the gank myself. Obviously, you can scan and whatnot and try and snowball my grind even further. If he shows up, I've got a cover and then afterwards I can go back to base. Definitely a long time to stay out, but the Rellas made the right decisions all the way. Now from the Nocturne's perspective, when you see her go to the mid lane, no back, 28 CS, you know her Raptors and Krugs are up, you know she's gonna go Raptors, Krugs, and most likely now gank the top side, or go back to base. Two decisions. 
If she does go back to base, then I know I can sequence down, get ahead of her at the bottom lane, and take away that ganky path. If she goes to the top lane, then I can guess what? Go counter jungling. All the while, the Rel actually cancels her base, stays, and gets another kill for the Gwent, snowballing that lane. This in turn forces the Nocturne to make a bit of a dumb decision with his ultimate, because you also ganked mid lane again. He now feels this pressure, knowing you're most likely gonna go and deal with your red, maybe take a Herald, though he goes and dies while tower diving at Lucian and Amelia. So you can see, basically seeing where enemy junglers show and what they do and what kind of plays are available, there's very often, hey, they can do this or they can do this. And the first option is something that really what they should be doing in your mind, and the other one is the B option, and you never know which one they're exactly gonna take, but you're thinking about it, which means you in your mind are also thinking about the counterplays to these things and you will never be surprised by randomness. You will never be surprised by the inability to take control of games because you're thinking and getting in the enemy jungler's head. And that's what separates the challenges from the non-challenges, or in this case, the emeralds, I suppose. And of course, this process keeps going back and forth throughout the early game until you get to that mid-game transition. But obviously, as you're seeing, it's most potent in this early game is the Nocturne's still dying. He's doing the Herald, she's doing the Dragon. She ends up ganking this and that. He ends up pushing the whole top side. We end up pushing the whole bottom side. There's multiple ways to play the game. Not every decision is categorically right or wrong. And sometimes there's two correct decisions that you just have to think about which one they may take so that you can be ready to react when they do. However, sometimes and most times people make terrible decisions. Let's look at this other Master Tier game, Belveth, for clearing up, Javan for clearing down. A lot of you will value the troll here, but we have a Viego ADC. Now, should this bother you? No. What can you do to carry the game? Probably not gank that lane. I'm not really interested in snowballing that kind of bottom lane. I would love an Aurelian Soul to kind of float around and scale nice and easy. I would like to get the Poppy fed so that she can deal with Trindomir pretty well. And I just want to make sure that I'm strong so that I can be the hyper carry with my Lulu. At least that's what I'm thinking if I'm the Belveth. Unfortunately, this is someone else and they decide, hey, I should go back to base after I do these Krugs. You know why? Because Jarvan, Jarvan, he's going to dive my melee bot lane. Oh well, yeah, of course. They picked a melee bot lane and it's Jarvan. He's going to full clear, take your scuttle and dive your bot lane. Hey, look at top wave. Look at that wave. Mmm. Oof. Any top laners in the chat, in the comments, what do you think your jungler should be doing here? Level 3 Trinomir, poppy damage. Oh my goodness, she goes for the trade. But where's our Baveth? Thinking too much about the Jarvan's option instead of about her option. So you've got to know when to balance the decision matrix. I expect Jarvan to do either full clear dive bot lane nice or full clear take the scuttle crab cross mid lane and take the other scuttle crab. If I know and I should that the Trinomir were to try, then I should go the other way, take the scuttle, go into the jungle and then dive him. This means if the Jarvan doesn't dive my bottom lane, he will, and I get the scuttle crab and dive his top laner. If he doesn't dive, then basically I'm safe because he's lost all control. I've taken away his top lane. I can now go back to base and then go straight to the bottom lane, gank it fresh, and then resequence and gank Poppy again. But now instead she chose to cut the Jarvan off with an item base, which is great if you can beat him. But if you still can't beat him, even though you have two long swords, you probably should know that about your matchup and also look to avoid him. Based on using the two decision jungle rule, you should not be in this situation wasting time because now the Jarvan gets to take the top scuttle. Now the Jarvan gets to push out the way for his Trinibir. Now the Jarvan gets to steal your Raptors before going back to base. And now he can go, right, the Belveth knows I was up here. The Belveth knows I most likely took away her Raptors. The Belveth knows I'm in control. So I think she should go to the bottom side here as there's a dragon up, her camps are respawning, the bottom lane's there. I can basically look to do other things instead or I can match her. Likewise, there's only a Krog camp here, so I don't expect her to take it. But I guess if she's bad, she could look to do that and offset top lane. And guess what? In silver, you might actually have someone literally do that. Go out of base, take the Krugs, not recognize the Raptors were gone, waste time ganking top lane. And as the Java one that does happen, guess what? Free gank spot, free dragon, free counter jungling. Her bad decision, based upon your two decision jungle rule, rewards you. If she does what you expect, you're ready to handle it and deal with it. So in all your games this week and for the foreseeable future, please start to think about what the enemy jungler wants to do in terms of the theoretically correct choice that you would make versus <laughs> maybe they might do this as well. And sometimes those two decisions will be one great, one dumb, and sometimes there'll be two great decisions and you just have to acknowledge that you are ready to handle whichever one they take. And if they do the one that's unexpected, like, you know, say steal your red, do your blue side, and then gank the bottom wave while you go back to base's fiddle and go back topside, that's not your fault. You can't help the fact that the Zac would have done that. You can't help the fact that your bottom lane might have actually died to it. But what that would mean is you can actually go ahead and steal his Raptors and Krugs again. So you always have to look for that outlet to their bad decision, but if they make the right decision, you're right in spot to carry the game. And hey, I don't want to spoil it, but the video on the top right really builds on this as a foundation because once you've understood that video, this video makes even more sense.